Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spindle TV. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy. I'm your host for the evening. I want to thank you all for joining me. Hello, Mike Smith, David Kinsey. Hey, Jim and Jeff. Jim, Senecola, and Jeff. How are you guys doing? I'm glad you guys are looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it as well. I think we're going to get a little creative tonight and have some fun. Hopefully you can hear me very well, and I um, hope things go uh, good. Hope you all are staying safe out there, and uh, I know times are kind of weird and tough for everyone uh, with all that's going on. We're all doing our best just to try to invest in the situation, and I'm hoping that hanging out with me for the next couple of hours this evening will kind of put a little bright spot in your day. Because I love you guys. I really, really do. <laughs> Hello, Charles Wallace. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about making some some faux frame wall art and we're going to go at it in a couple different ways we're going to um look at it in a way of uh creating our own frame type moldings uh we're going to look at it uh from the aspect of using uh some models uh to help uh, create some moldings and picture frames and layouts and stuff and uh, we're going to have some fun um hey ronald sam thanks for joining us I think it's going to be interesting. I think you guys are going to enjoy it. We're going to try to make this, you know, not a long and boring class. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it uh, over to our Vetric software. And, and uh, let's see what we've got to play with tonight. <clears throat> so uh, first thing I'm going to do is to make things uh, more enjoyable for you as far as viewing pleasure. Let me... I forget to do this every single time. Let me change my display settings so things are <clears throat> much larger for you so you can see where my mouse is going and all that wonderful stuff. All right, and let's close that down and come back on in here. All right. So hopefully that's nice and big. Now, of course, you're it's small right now because you're seeing me on the side. Uh, good evening, Pops Band. Ronnie, how are you doing? Troy, good evening to you. Um, we are going to, as I was saying for the people that are just popping in and everything, I want to look at making some really uh, cool, distinctive uh, wall art, in a sense, of uh, some different uh, portraits or pictures or could be sayings or phrases but using a combination of either frames from the molding toolpath that we make or maybe making some uh, really nice decorative frames <clears throat> excuse me from uh models that we can put together we're going to be utilizing a bunch of different tools uh, such as the molding toolpath we're going to be looking at the modeling tab in our software and see about uh, some of the uh, clipping tools that are available now within the modeling and all uh, mirroring tools and stuff and let's see what we can do now what you're going to see on the screen here is some profiles for some different picture frames that i've uh, made or collected over the years but before we get into that let's talk about our job setup and let's get into a full screen and right now uh as it stands uh, i'm going to set this up as a single-sided job now i possibly could set it up as a two-sided job if i wanted to uh, do anything like, uh, you know, make some custom keyhole slots in the back for hanging on a wall and stuff like that. But I think on this particular wall art, uh, I may, you know, we may use some different hanging styles. We might use uh, regular standard picture frame cable or something. Uh, we might uh, use a French cleat method uh, and, and things like that. But we can also absolutely cut some keyhole slots or keyhole ways uh, in the back and uh, hang it that way as well. And if we decide that later on, then we'll we'll add a second side to this and we'll we'll create that toolpath because we would do those first before we carved our final piece. 
Now, what I've got set up here, and you can, uh, of course, size this to any size that fits your machine or whatever the piece that you're kind of, in, you know, envisioning if this time ever comes for you. But what I've laid out here is a 24 inch by 15 inch by three quarter inch uh, piece of material. And depending on the models and stuff, if we needed to go with thicker material and all, we would. But right now, I want to make this as standard as possible. I want to be able to glue up together a three quarter inch panel to make this piece. Uh, and that be, you know, good enough uh, to be what it is. I don't really want uh, to go too thicker than that because then that complicates our, you know, making of the panel and all. So we're going to go with three quarters for right now. Now, on my current job setup, when I set up and everything, I work off of the machine bed. My waste board is my Z0 position, uh, but you could absolutely work off the material surface if you, um, you know, so desired. The reason for this particular project that I'm going to be setting up to work off the wasteboard of the machine bed is that my frame is going to go edge to edge. So unless I have some alternative clamping methods and, and not using mechanical clamps that clamp off the top of the material, uh, this whole surface is going to get milled away. And so um, I'm either going to make sure my board's a little longer so I have places for clamps and I can cut that waste off after the fact or I'm going to hot glue, two-sided tape, vacuum clamp, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I don't want any clamps up on top. I could use my cam clamp, but I don't want any clamps on top because I'm going to go edge to edge with this particular project. So I'm going to work off the machine bed for my Z0 since the entire surface is going to end up getting milled away. Now, because of my setup on my wasteboard, I work from the bottom left corner of the uh, project as my XY zero, my datum position. And again, the reason for this uh, not working off the center or something is this is gonna end up getting completely milled away in some form or fashion. So I'd like to be able to um, work off my corner. And I guess that's kind of a, you know, uh, a, you know, for me, even if my corner and my entire surface is getting away, I can still edge find my two edges to get my X and Y zero if I needed to recover. But that's that's my setup. Again, you would set up accordingly for yourself. And I'm going to make these files along with all the things, uh, these profiles for these different frames and stuff. I'm going to make them available. And uh, the description of the video, the files for this particular class will be available. Uh, Alid, hey, welcome. William, welcome. Gary, nice to see you. Steven, good to see you. Uh, so with that being said, I've got my model resolution set as uh, very high, and we're going to click OK and get right into this. Now, as I said here, over, uh, you know, the period of years and all, I've got a few files of different, you know, picture frame type profiles for when I want to carve a picture frame. Uh, the cool thing about if you're in version 10 under the clip art, uh, one of the new categories under the clip art is molding profiles. And there's actually some molding profiles here that Vetric has provided to you as well. Uh, but what I typically end up doing is when I am uh, draw out a profile or I create one or I find one that I like that I've traced or something, I kind of put them together in a single DXF file so I can import them in and have them there so I can kind of pick and choose what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these objects here and let's um, kind of pull them over to the side and we'll reference them in a moment. All right, let's get started here and look at the different ways that we can come up with for creating uh, decorative molding. And I'm going to just throw a picture on the wall. Not that picture, this picture here. Oop, not that picture, this picture there. Slow down there, mouse. Um, <laughs> Here's a kind of an example of a framed, a faux framed. This is uh, looks like a mitered picture frame around the edges, but it's actually carved. And it actually has those nice mitered corners and everything. And that's all due to the molding tool path and stuff. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a nice little uh, sample just to kind of show you that. So that's going to be the first style that we're going to go with. We're going to go with the molded frame for our first style. So let's start off with a rectangle tool. And let's get in here and draw a rectangle. Now, I'm if you're in, I think, I think even version 9.5 and 9 had these, maybe 9.5, but 
your smart snapping and your geometry snapping, you want those on because what we want to do, and let me undo that, is I want to snap right to that corner. And I'm holding down my left mouse button and dragging and snapping that rectangle to this corner over here just to get that original layout now. Now, I would like my frames uh, to be about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter to inch and a half in diameter. I want a nice, wide, decorative frame. When we get into some of the older uh, other styles and stuff, and you're going to see some really unique pieces here come up when we start kind of playing with our models and all. But uh, those frames are going to be completely unique. It's not going to be just a simple mitered frame. We're going to do some really cool stuff uh, later here in just a little bit. But I want about an inch and a half, uh, an inch and a quarter to inch and a half frame. So I'm going to offset this rectangle inward. And let's go with, I'm going to go with an inch and a half. I want sharp corners and I want to delete the original. I don't want the original there anymore when I create this offset. And that's going to give me my frame area there all right now with that i want nice square corners uh you know if i was b carving something and doing something i could put some decorative corners with that rectangle tool i could put some internal radius or something but i want nice square corners because i'm going to use this as a path for my molding tool path to follow and uh with that we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll fill in the middle with some designs and stuff here in a moment but let's kind of focus on the frame so now it comes down to the choice of picking our frame that we want. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy right here. And I'm going to pull him over onto the whiteboard so everybody can see. <laughs> and let's get up close and personal with him. All right. So this nice uh, decorative profile here. If we go into the size tool currently, this is set up at a width of 1.65 inches by a little over a half an inch. Now, I just offset that rectangle inward an inch and a half. So I need to be at that inch and a half mark. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring this in. And I want to bring this in just to that inch and a half. So I'm going to resize this to 1.5. And that's going to bring my height from the bottom of my profile to the top to a half an inch. And I'm okay with that. If I wasn't, then I would uncheck the link X, Y, and I would scale the height appropriately. But I'm, I'm good with keeping uh, the default settings that were created when I changed this to an inch and a half. So we're going to just scale that down that little bit. Now, I want the high side. Well, it all depends. Uh, it really kind of looks good both ways. but. For right now, let's create the high side coming in, going down to the low side here. Okay. And so just to make things easier, I'm going to mirror this frame profile here, not rotate. I'm going to mirror it. Uh, and I'm just going to flip it horizontally just so we can kind of have that visual and stuff and all there. Now, you've probably obviously seen those frames uh you know picture frames and all where the frame is kind of low and then it kind of comes out high on the outside versus you know starting out high and then coming out low uh either way you want to do it you know whatever looks good we'll we'll check out both ways and see how it goes all right with that i want to go ahead and i'm going to pop over to the molding toolpath and on that molding toolpath i'm going to select my path that i want to follow I'm going to hold down my shift key and select my profile. And when we do that, we're going to see these lines shoot out. And let's get centered back up here on my uh, piece. And we can see these lines shoot out. And that's what we want. We want these lines to go from our path to the edge of our board. Uh, and, uh, you know, that means that my profile was scaled appropriately and everything. Now, you're never going to get there on the corners. It's going to stop short and everything. But on our path here, Everything is good. Um, you always create your molding toolpath from the inside out. So I wouldn't draw a rectangle on the outside and create my molding toolpath because then that path would be out here. We always have to create the inner path and the profile is going to be extruded basically outward from that inner path. And the with that, 
I've got my height in here. My model's positioned exactly uh, where I need it. So I'm going to choose a tapered ball nose bit for this. Now, if we look at this profile, let's get a good close look at this again. Uh, we have some flat areas here and here and here. Um, so we'll probably machine those flat regions uh, with a flat area clearance tool. And uh, with everything, uh, I believe an eighth inch uh, tapered ball nose will work good. So let's go in there and let's select our eighth inch tapered ball nose. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. All right, that looks good. All right, so we got our eighth inch tapered ball nose here. And like I said, we may have some flat regions, so I'll use a large area clearance tool, and I will just use my quarter inch end mill for that. And I want to machine the flat regions. <clears throat> now, what I'm hoping is, and I don't know, and I'm sorry, my voice, I got a frog in my throat today. Give me a second. Let me see if I can drown out that frog with a little seven up or spider. What I'm hoping with, um, and I didn't really experiment with this uh, earlier or anything, is that the flat regions that my bit, even though these flat regions aren't a quarter inch in width and things, that my bit will still cut those flat regions. It'll just cut off to the side and it'll create the tool path appropriately. Let's, here's hoping on that. All right, let's go ahead and calculate this. Ah, we want sharp corners, sharp corners. I want it to look like a mitered frame. Let's go ahead and calculate this toolpath and let's see what we end up with here. All right. So I'm going to tilt this to the side. And I'm going to kind of bring the corner up. Oop, bring the corner up uh, close and everything. So that way we can kind of get a good look at this uh, profile on the edge of the frame here. So let's preview uh, this toolpath. And let's see what we end up with. So the first thing we end up with is even though I've mirrored that molding toolpath, it still created that low side to the high side. And, you know, for the most part, if we look at it, that's not a bad looking frame, right? Pretty sexy. Can't agree, disagree with that. But for this one, that's not quite what I want right now. So let's go ahead and um, go back into that toolpath. And on this green node right here, let's right click first direction that one from here and you see those was traveling around and it's going to here again it's from the inside so if i reverse the direction the arrows are going this way again from the inside out and that puts that on the outside of my board and that's not what i want for right now so let's reverse that and simply recalculate that tool all right let's reset that preview and once again let's get into position here let's Pull this up and kind of get up close and personal with it. And let's pull this up. And uh, let's preview the other tool path. I only clicked one. <clears throat> let's get that mall. Lord of mercy. Sorry, guys. Don't mean to keep clearing my throat and everything, but I don't know what's going on. All right. So let's come back into here. And now we've got, you know, another frame. And again, the other style looked great as well. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. But I want this, I want this high in here. I want this thick and everything. And I want to be able to kind of surface down. Whoop, close that. I want to kind of surface down uh, this area uh, to, let's see if we can get close. To, up close and I'm going to end up surfing this down to kind of bring it right almost beneath this level here. And everything so we'll end up doing a pocket tool path to that in just a moment but uh, that's going to be our frame our first frame of many that's not a bad looking frame you can't argue with that uh, i like that profile a lot of the profiles i've collected are just you know profiles that have drawn or or uh, enjoyed working with in the past and they look really good all right so with that being said i'll take this profile and let's move it out of the way <laughs> and now we can kind of start working on the inside now, with the inside of the design, and let's get back over to our drawing tools, there's a 
multitude of things uh, that we can do. Uh, we could work with our clip art. Uh, and I have some very cool uh, clip art from Design and Make, some different models we could drop in and create some different sceneries and stuff. We could just create some really nice ornate uh, type carvings, almost like patterns and things. Uh, it really, it could just be something, you know, uh, where there's some words or phrases or, or, or something, you know, whatever best fits the space for what you're kind of uh, wanting to uh, create and everything. And so what I'm going to do is we're gonna, I'm going to create some texture and everything, but I'd like to create some, maybe some word art. Now, one of the cool things, again, about version 10 is uh, if we go into the clip art gallery, one of the things that they've provided to us is some vectors on some stylized words. And, you know, they've got some, you know, stylized words and different things, Mr. and Mrs., but there's nothing really that kind of thankful, give thanks, you know, not bad, you know, but that's that's not fitting my my style tonight. so. Let's go in here and let's create our own. And what I'd like to do is uh, kind of create a nice something that, that that has a statement and then maybe do some decorative carving around it. Just really fill this in uh, with something nice. So let's uh, let's start off with uh, I'm going to go with a three inch tall text for right now. Uh, I'll size it down appropriately and all it all depends on what's going on here. And um, let's come in and let's do hmm. trying to decide on do I want capital letters or do I want lowercase? Definitely going to be lowercase, so home. home. Let me learn how to spell. <clears throat> All right, let's choose a font. Now, once again, uh, for those of you that may or may not know, uh, one of the great places to help us choose fonts is wordmark.it. W O R D. M A R K dot I T. And what word mark dot I T does for us is it gives us the ability to see a phrase or a word or whatever we type in uh, in all of our fonts that are installed on our computer. And so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to click to uh, enable Adobe Flash. That way it shows me all the fonts on my computer. Let it Kind of reset itself. And I'm just going to use for right now the word sweet. I could do home sweet. I don't need to type in the whole thing home. And let's type it like we're going to type it there home. Let's press enter and see what we have. All right, so let's see if there's anything that jumps out at us. And all right, so right now it's not showing all of my fonts. And let me get my Adobe Flash working. Work with me, Adobe Flash. Help me, Obi One. You're my only hope. Adobe One. Allow. There we go. Now let's give that another try. Home. All right. That's more. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at uh, some fonts and see if there's anything. Because we're not going to go, I'm going to kind of go a little bit uh, not so 
straight up and down, you know, box cookie cutter and stuff. We're going to do a little bit of distortion and things. So let's see what we've got here. Percy Day doesn't look bad. Edwardian strip doesn't look too shabby. Come on down. Freestyle. Gidgey looks pretty cool. Might kind of see what old Gidgey's about. Harrington. I like Harrington. Harrington looks good. I think I'm going to go with Harrington. Let's come on down and see what else we got to play with. All right, I think I'm going to go with, for time's sake, I think I'm going to go with, there's some, we're going to be using those a little later. That's the American Swash. All right. Ooh. Let's do Old Alfie. I like Old Alfie. Old Alfie looks good. All right, let's do that. Old Alfie. That's over here. That's that one. And that'll go with our little swashes and stuff. So we're going to come over here and let's jump up to the O's. Or jump down to the O's, should I say. And let's grab some old Alfie. Very nice. All right. So with this on the screen, what we're going to do is I'm going to right click on this text. Because right now I wrote it in one big text block. So right now I'm going to break that text block into lines i've right clicked on this and i'm going to left click on break text block into lines and that will create these three individual lines here because i want these uh to be uh completely different in things and uh sweet i'm going to work with something different but let me get the home here kind of throw this right over here let's throw this one Here a bit and old sweet old sweet let's get old sweet uh looking pretty big but let's uh do some distortion now i could either use the distort tool for this or i could use uh wrap on a curve and uh i think i'm going to distort it so let's go ahead and go to the distort tool and put it inside of a uh, bounding box here and the first thing i'm going to do is select the two sides of this box here and let's select all three of those and pull them out <clears throat> get sweet select all three of these and you notice let me let me undo what i just did here for you guys on these lines here they have the center line point that little clear box and what I've done is by clicking on that box and kind of pulling on it a little bit, it, it inserts a point. It's kind of a, for me, it's a way instead of going right click, insert point, you know, it just, it puts that point there. Uh, so that way I can then select all of these and then pull them out accordingly and stuff. Um, on this line up here, I'm going to create a busy curve and I'd like to kind of pull this down and on this bottom line as well, make that a busy curve and kind of pull this up and I'm going to be doing some rotate and I'd like it to kind of follow along here so let's kind of <clears throat> pull this like have a kind of a nice sweeping curve and getting a little pointy there All right, let's get this rotated in position, and then I will uh, take it a little further. What I'd like to do is have it come up. <clears throat> kind of want it to kind of come here, but I want it to sweep into there. Um, and so I'm going to come back in, and now I'm going to create my kind of my sweep. So let's get that brought up like it's sweeping let's pull this 
down, pull this down, and I sweep. I'm going to insert a point here so I can pull this up a little bit, kind of that low. And um, on this one, I want to kind of insert a point in the middle here. Pull this. I've got a little bit of a distortion. <clears throat> there we go. I'm using the arrow keys now to kind of get how I want. All right. So I am content with that. Let's go ahead and uh, what I'd like to do, kind of keep a little bit of uh, consistency. Uh, this is right now about. 4.1157 inches tall and this one here is a little bit smaller let's make it the same and that for me looks good let's get this centered up alignment tool and center and then as far as this let's bring this one over a little bit closer and maybe up a little bit all right now i've got all of this area in here that i'd like to kind of do something with whether it be a texture whether it be some kind of carved pattern something just to make it pop uh and everything and uh yeah stephen Gigi is nice sorry and if you guys have any questions while i'm going uh please jump in and uh hey mark Lindsay, welcome mark i loved your video on the split fonts uh monograms uh great job on that bud um thanks for popping in tonight and so i'd like to find something to kind of fill in here and uh maybe do some nice uh little decorative designs and everything and uh but let's let's kind of see where we're at first of all if you recall if we go back into the 3D view here, uh, I said that I wanted to bring uh, this center area down to kind of where it uh, looks a little bit better in here. And so I'm, I'm basically going to be doing a, a full pocket cut, if you will. And that is going to basically be using the inside of this vector to kind of uh, pocket this out. Now, this text is going to be raised. And the design that I add in here, I would like to be raised as well, too. And I, when I pocket this down and all, I, I want that text to kind of come. I don't want it protruding above that uh, profile, if you will. So I'll most likely have a initial pocket cut um, with a quarter inch end mill, most likely. Uh, you know, I could probably use a larger end mill. Uh, let's do both. Let's do two. So I'm going to do a quarter inch end mill. And add that in. And then I'm going to use a larger area clearance tool to help kind of mill away this. And I'm going to go with my half inch end mill. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to raster with the grain. Nice cut back and forth and everything. So uh, we'll go zero on the raster angle. I'm going to uh, ramp uh, this pocket cut in. I'll probably go with a one inch distance. Uh, that's good. And this is going to be just my initial uh, hearing pocket, if you will. Uh, let me learn how to spell. And on that cut depth, I think I'm just going to bring it down for right now an eighth of an inch. And so let's calculate this tool path. And let's bring that down an eighth of an inch. And let's go a little bit more. Because I got to remember now, I'm only bringing this down. Um, whatever my, this top level is what my text is going to be at. And let's see here. 
I'm actually kind of, that's good. We're going to go with just that uh, for right now. <clears throat> so that's good. We'll uh, leave that be. And then I'll do the rest of the pocketing as I raise my text and everything up. All right, so now it comes down to creating uh, the pattern, whether it be a texture. I'm going to do a texture or some kind of ornate pattern and all. And earlier, you guys um, <clears throat> may or may not have seen, but when we were in that uh, text tool, within my uh, text tool, I have some kind of decorative uh, swirls and and things. Let's get that. Oh, I passed it up. With uh, kind of these uh, different patterns, uh, the Moriasha swash, and let's not seeing anything that tickles my fancy uh, in the samples. So we'll bypass that one for right now. Let's go ahead and go into and let's bring in a piece of clip art. Now for the clip art. I'm going to, I've got a variety of flourishes, uh, and let's see here. Let's go to downloads. And they're either going to be in my, oh, no, I'm sorry, they're in my document. Where's my gold cover? That's kind of basic and plain. I might be able to use some of those patterns, but let's let's come on down and see what I've got here. That's a little crazy. We'll hold off on that. Are all my flourishes eluding me right now? They are. Go to my downloads and see if they're hiding down there. Do not ever get your computer like this. You should keep everything in a nice folder so it's all laid out. And, um, you know, all that wonderful stuff. One more time. Sorry, guys and girls. All right, now. This one's not going to be the best, but it'll get me going here so we can move along. Let's zoom into it. Ooh, either my glasses are fuzzy or that's blurry as all be it. That's because it's a thumbnail. You want, guys and girls, you want high resolution images when you're searching for images uh, uh, and, and things like that. Um, we want uh, to get the highest quality possible that we can get and everything let's see if we can fix that let's get rid of that <clears throat> this is low quality as everything else all right but it's good enough. It'll get me going. All right. Let's go ahead and trace this up. Uh, trace. Not text laney, even though it starts with a T. We're going to go with the trace tool. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the fading off so we can see this image in its uh, full glory. And my goodness, that's even more pixelated. Let's see here. That was horrible. We're not going to deal with that, guys. We can't have that. Let's get rid of that. One more time, Laney. You can do it. Third time's a charm. Oh, yeah. Love it when a plan comes together. Okay, let's zoom into that. Much. Oh, I thought I was going. I thought I had to clean my glasses there for a minute. All right, let's go ahead and trace these out. Uh, we're going to go over to our trace tool, and I'm going to turn this fading off here. 
and uh, I'm going to use just the black and white and let's pull this in. Uh, not so much there. I want some detail on this. I'm going to use my default corner fit, uh, default noise filter, and just preview to trace that. Click apply and close to close that tool. And then I'm going to come in here and let's turn off our bitmap layer. Oh, so wonderful. All right, let's ungroup these and let's start kind of uh, mixing and mashing and pulling some things around. I want to kind of use a combination of things uh, and, and all. So let's grab these guys. And first of all, what I'm going to do is take a few seconds to group these individually. And I'm just selecting each one individually so I can... Um, not have to uh, mess around with so i'm literally just selecting each of these individually and sometimes you select what you don't want and sometimes you don't select what you do want all right so right there that group doesn't belong i got so fast and let's try that again nice and neat Now these are just individual little strands, but we are going to blend them together to create some backfill, if you will, some pattern, uh, some card patterns or what have you. Uh, let's see what we can do here. <clears throat> let's throw that up there. Let's take. Pull these things in. And I'd like to add something, a little bit of something to that. So let's grab pull that not that far down. And let's grab this little guy too and bring him in. All right, let's focus on him for a moment. <clears throat> All right, with our, let's take uh, these two objects here, ungroup them. I'm going to hit the letter U on the keyboard to ungroup. And I'm simply going to select this outer boundary here, this outer boundary here, and I'm going to weld these two objects together. <clears throat> and I should have grabbed this one as well, so I missed one. And let's weld those together. And to create that nice little ornate pattern here. And let's see what else we have to play with. Uh, I like this guy. Let's take, I'm going to hit the number nine key on the keyboard and I'm going to rotate him ever so slightly and I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. And let's kind of freehand him up. Let's see where he wants to be. Everything wants to be somewhere. Let's mirror him, flip him horizontally. And There, and let's go ahead and ungroup these two. I'm going to hit the letter U on the keyboard. And once again, let's take this object here and this object here, and let's get those initially uh, kind of welded together. And 
on these two objects here. Let's eliminate. I'm going to use my trim tool and let's uh, kind of eliminate. All right, so let's select that and and everybody's like, Laney, right now you're just looks like you're just filling stuff to fill stuff, just to kind of fill stuff. It doesn't look like there's any rhyme or reason or pattern to it, and you may be right. All right, let's make him a little bit smaller. Be like, Lenny, what the hell's an oak leaf got to do with that vine? Where, why is an oak leaf? I'm asking the same question there. That doesn't play a role. Let's give him a little bit of a turn. All right. <clears throat> we'll go with that, and then we're going to fill in, backfill with some texture. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and um, select everything. And this is going to be a V-carved tool path. And once again, hey, uh, welcome Dave Clemens from Brooklyn and Raven's Art. How are you doing? Uh, on our V-carved tool path here, we're going to start at zero. We're going to start at um, uh, not zero. So we're going to start at an eighth of an inch because if you recall, that uh, first pocket cut milled this down to an eighth of an inch. Uh, from there, I'm going to set a flat depth, and I'm going to probably only go, um, let's go an additional quarter of an inch. And let's come in here with our 60 degree V-bit. And I don't need all these clearance tools. Let's remove that one. And I'm going to keep these two, a quarter inch and an eighth inch. Uh, so the quarter inch will kind of do a majority of the work. The eighth inch will kind of get a little bit tighter. And then my V-bit will finish off. And I didn't need the 16th in there. I don't need to kind of get, you know, all that detail and all. Um, because there's going to be a texture after all of this. So with that and everything, let's make sure that uh, we group. I don't want all these vectors to be individualized let's kind of group that make sure that one is grouped make sure that one's grouped and that one's grouped okay <clears throat> that way it's kind of treated like one object let's come in here and with that being said let's create this tool path all right so I'm kind of curious uh, to see exactly what uh, it's reading as the overlaps, uh, because if so, I'd like to clean them up. So let's kind of search our selected objects here and let's see what's overlapping. And my little flourish there is right on that border. So let's kind of bump him over. Not that much. Hold down that control key. I can micro move. All right, let's do that one more time. That vector validator is an invaluable tool. And I think the vector validator came out in 9 or 9.5. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's great. Sometimes you can ignore its heeds, warnings and all. But what that tool is going to do for you, it's going to bring out and show you the potential issues that you might, you know, overlapping vectors, zero length spans intersections and things like that and it's really an invaluable tool all right let's go ahead and preview this uh visible tool path and let's see what we end up here with so that eighth inch is now coming in and then we're going to follow that up with our quarter inch our v bit and all Okay. All right. And let's see where we want to take it from here. 
I'm not a big fan of it. Let me see. Let me look at this. Yeah, I'm going to take that down from a quarter of an inch. I'm going to take that tool path down. Um, not that one. Sorry. I'll take that down a little bit. I'm not a fan of that high of a cut <clears throat> for right now. Let's recalculate that. Let's reset this and preview all the tool paths. Let's get back to where we are. So that's that initial pocket, pocketing that away. Now after this, we're going to go into uh, the clip art and the models, and we're going to make a frame with our models instead of uh, a molded frame. And uh, we're going to use the mirroring tool, a combination of the clipping tool and things, and uh, come up with uh, some nice different styles and all. While this is... Uh, cutting out and everything. Any questions up to this point as to what in the heck are you doing, Lane? Because the last tool path for this particular one is going to be a molding tool path. Or not molding tool path, I'm sorry, a texturing tool path. Just give a little bit of texture, hand cut texture to this. Okay. And uh, that looks a little bit cleaner. Now, let's go ahead and uh, let's bring our texture in. Now, when it comes to the texturing toolpath, there's a lot of things uh, that we can do. Uh, and what I'd like to do with this, instead of having the texture fill in this whole area here, I'd like to kind of create a little bit of a dividing line, if you will. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, because I'm going to be creating that dividing line, uh, that, that line is going to kind of cut into the letters here a bit. So I'm going to take all of my vectors here and I'm going to copy them to a new layer. And this is going to be kind of my trim layer, if you will. And uh, we'll uh, give it a color of red. And what that allow me to do is come in here and turn off all of these layers except for that trim layer. Make sure it's active when you're working in it. And that's going to give me the ability. And let's close this for a moment so we can maximize our ability and all. It'll give me the ability to come in and kind of create a little bit of a trim that I want to texture in. Well, for the most part, uh, the texture is going to have a kind of a rectangular cut, um, you know, kind of in the bottom. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of have this and I'm going to turn this line into a Bezier curve I'd like to kind of have this. In a bit. Pull that up some. Kind of texture in this area here. I don't want to kind of, you know, do the whole thing. And now I could have had it just kind of texture, you know, I could have drawn a line to, you know, keep some of this in the texture, some of this out and things, but I kind of like it to just split kind of uh, right through it, uh, you know, somewhat, if you will. Probably not making a whole lot of sense. But now that I have this boundary, now I need to come in and make a texture boundary. So uh, first of all, anything outside of my texture area? Goodbye. So all of this is gone. And then I'm just going to take my trim tool and just start trimming away. Now, before I do that, I need to ungroup anything uh, that is grouped. And I do that every single time. I need to right click and ungroup 
don't holler, boy. Are you in group? Onto the groups layer. Onto this layer. Okay. On group. Onto this layer. On group. On this layer. For my text, the uh, home, all that's fine. This has been vectorized, which is good. Now I can come in here and start cleaning up and getting rid of this stuff. Now, basically, my boundary is, um, oops, did I jump one? Let's see, that goes to there, that goes to there. This line, let me undo that last cut, last two cuts. This is going to be that, and that comes around, that gets cut, and that gets cut. Does that get cut? Are you playing with me, man? Yeah. And so that doesn't need to be there. And neither does that one. And neither does that one. I just need this profile. That's my outer surrounding. I don't need these two little things here. All right. Once again, let's go through and um, <clears throat> on our object here in order for me because this is still it's not even though it looks like it's broken up uh it's still in a distorted envelope so if i went into node in editing you can see it's still in an envelope there and it won't let me trim that until i convert it back to a curved object so i'm going to right click and convert to curves that breaks it out of the envelope and now i can come in and you know Kind of finish cleaning up so basically i don't need anything that's outside of that take a moment and clean this away and again i'm creating that profile line and these two objects right here can get deleted in a moment but let's keep on trucking on that object can get deleted in a moment trim that away trim that away and that and Clean that up. All right. So any of these floating objects here, we don't need them. The texture's not cutting in there. We're creating an outline for the texture to carve within. So again, we don't need that or that. Now you would, I mean, you could keep these if you wanted the texture to carve in the middle of those letters and stuff. If you wanted texture to carve in the middle of those letters. I am not going to have the texture carved within the middle of those letters, so I'm getting rid of them. And so with that, I no longer need this border, and I have my texture boundary. And so now I can take that and come over to my texturing tool. And uh, Todd, I'll get to your question right after this, because we're going to take a moment to answer questions. and. Um, as soon as I create this texture. Now, I need to know where my texture should start. So I'm going to pop over to my 3D view here. And if I look at the bottom of my cut right here, you can see that my Z is at a half an inch. Okay. And that my board is now I'm working from the bottom of my material. Okay. So my board is three quarters of an inch thick. And I've cut an eighth of an inch pocket, and then I cut an eighth of an inch depth here, which is a total of a quarter. And if you subtract a quarter from three quarters, that brings it to the half inch mark right here. But that's not my cut depth. 
if you're working off the top of the material, when you hover your mouse over here, it'll show you your Z cut depth. If you're working off the bottom of your material, it's showing you where you're at from your top of your material. So I'm at a half inch. That means I my cut depth to this pocket, bottom of this pocket, is a quarter of an inch. So that's where I'm starting at 0.25. Now, from there, uh, I'll have it cut a maximum cut depth of, let's go 0.15 with a variation of a 16th of an inch. Maximum cut length, I'm going to go with a 2 inch maximum cut length with a minimum of about a half. I'm going to let things overlap uh, about 30% on those cut lines. And then I'm going to step over half the diameter of my bit, so a 16th of an inch. And I would like, instead of cutting straight across this, I'd like to have a slight angle, so I'll go with about a 10 degree angle. Now, I do not want my bit coming in and cutting into my frame or any of my objects that are within that, you know, that vector area. So I'm going to have it stay away from them by about an eighth of an inch. And if we calculate this, and when it's all said and done, you might say, I mean, that looks stupid, man. Put the texture on the whole thing. Who knows? It's all about kind of experimenting and being creative. And none of this has been, you know, pre-drawn or pre-thought. And you're like, that's obvious. <laughs> Sorry, that was a wrong button. Everybody, how many people ducked? <laughs> uh, I was trying to push on. That's obvious, man. I can tell what he's doing. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's preview that textured toolpath. Okay. Now, the one thing I'm not liking about the texture is I think the length is uh, that one inch length or that four inch length uh, just kind of makes it look a little, I don't know, not too shabby. But uh, let's, 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 if we could, while I answer Todd's question and everything, let's change that up just for a moment. I'm happy, the, the cut depth is fine. My uh, ball nose is fine. Um, let's reduce this down. To about an inch. Vary that a bit to let's go about a little under an eighth. And let's bring this down to somewhere around a half an inch. All right, well, that's calculating out. Let's go ahead and look at what Todd uh, got going on here. Todd's question is, how would you clamp down, uh, how would you clamp that down uh, to cut with your router? Uh, Todd, there are a couple of ways that I would address that. Um, so I would either cam clamp with my side clamps that are low profile, uh, locking the, uh, the part in place. I could use the double side tape method uh, as far as, uh, you know, two sided tape. I could use the uh, painter's tape and CA glue method to hold this down. Um, if I had vacuum pods uh, or a vacuum table, uh, I could, you know, work with that. Um, there's a lot of different ways that uh, we clamp this. Now, for me, I don't have, I got vacuum pods, but uh, not, not enough. Uh, so I would uh, most likely either use the painter's tape and CA glue method or the two-sided tape. But for me, with my setup on my, uh, my wasteboard, uh, I have my fence and my cam clamps, which are low profile cams. And so that would, that would be the majority of way that I would cam clamp it in. And I would have, uh, you know, a couple of clamp cams on this side and two on this side pushing into my 90 degree fence to lock that into place. So that's how I would uh, address that, that issue and all. All right. So, um, 
I'm hoping uh, that that answers your question. Pause. Let's uh, stop that. Stop that. Reset that and preview all those cool paths. We'll be going to the next question. Um, Stephen, not much of a question, more of a kudos. Thank you, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Uh, way and only six. Joe's only fifty nine watching and only six thumbs up. Joe, let me some love. Thanks, Troy. I appreciate that. You guys show some love. You know, let's take a let's take a big old round of applause. <laughs> Can you tell I got a new uh, noise box that I like playing with? Um, but uh, yeah, Mark, uh, I love Mark's comment here, and it's so true. Uh, some of the best projects are a result of experimenting. You know, what looks good, what not. And that's the one thing that I love about the Vetrix uh, preview window. Uh, you set that uh, preview simulation quality to a very high quality. You get about a 98% representation of what your project's going to look like. And you're not wasting any wood here. You can play around, make changes and alterations and all until you get that look that you want and then take it to the table. And that is a big thing. Uh, and that's what that preview um, preview uh, screen that we're looking at here. It's, uh, it's a big asset. Uh, I've worked with some programs where the preview simulation quality were not up to par. And, you, you know, I'm I'm very happy with uh, what Vetric has done with this uh, simulation and all, uh, to where we can really get a good representation of what's happening and all. All right. All right. So basically what this does is is by kind of limiting that texture and you can uh, you know i could have i could have used a bigger bit uh like a quarter inch ball nose and all to get really some really spoon scooping out hand sculpted looks and all but what it does is um in combination with the flourishes and everything kind of gives that you know back 40 out in the field in the hills look to the project you know um it uh you know imagine a, a grassy hill or a a, a a a crop or a field or something of that that nature and all and you've got things kind of growing out of it and stuff uh and you know you got your horizon line uh with the sky and everything and it just gives it that just that little extra something now, if I would not have removed the center parts of the ease, that texture would have continued in those ease if you wanted it to, you know, if you if we did want it to kind of flow through and not have this these bare spots here on the two ease, I could have left those two objects in there instead of deleting them. And I could have had the texture cut in there as well. But I'm, you know, I'm content with that, uh, with the way it looks and everything. And uh I am most likely going to be at Vetric Mark. I appreciate you uh, for stopping by. Uh, looking forward to your next uh, podcast and everything. Um, but I most likely will be at the Vetric user group meeting uh, in uh, San Diego if in September if it happens. And I look forward to seeing you there. Uh, if you're going to be there, definitely uh, look forward to seeing you there and everything. And once again, like I said, uh, I, I got to catch, uh, you know, a video of yours, uh, you know, just recently on the split text monograms. Nice job on it. Like all your videos, man. Uh, but uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your day to pop in. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to pop in. But uh, Mark's a good friend. I appreciate you. Everybody's like, wait a minute. Mark's a good friend? What? We're not friends, Lanny man? What? 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 Boy, you better correct what you just said. We're going to have an issue. <laughs> okay, I'll stop playing around now. So, yeah, uh, no, we're all friends. Here. I love everybody. All right. Yeah, man, can't wait to see you there. So do you guys get it? Do you kind of see where we're happening here? What's going on with, with uh, you know, uh, 
working on. Any questions on this before we move on to bigger and better things? Uh, but I wouldn't mind hanging that on my wall, right? Pretty nice. And by the way, uh, this font here, uh, if you're curious, um, is part of the Heritage Font Collection. Uh, I I wish I could remember the uh, name of the company. Um, Heritage Font Company, maybe? Heritage Company or something? But uh, this particular font is called the Old Alfie. And it's part of that uh, font collection. And it's around $65. And uh, it's got some really nice fonts and features and things in there. But uh, Heritage, font, Heritage Font Bundle. And um, if you're on Facebook and all, you'll see ads and stuff every once in a while for uh, from them. But uh, some really nice, nice uh, projects and all. But you know, you can imagine uh, just you know some just some nice uh, wall art and stuff. All right, now let's take it up a notch, and let's look at. Let's turn off this layer here, and let's create a new layer. And we'll call this Leia, not layer two. Let's get a little original here. We'll call this layer our modeled frame. And with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I'm, did it not save? Laney, rename modeled and hit enter there we go make sure it's highlighted in bold make sure you can see it up here that's that knows that's where you know that's the layer you're working in and all um but uh once again for this i'm gonna draw in a rectangle now for those of you with aspire you have the ability to create some really unique models and all and everything and uh do some really cool and creative stuff and the Thing about it is is not to change the subject uh from the frames and all but imagine if i were doing a lid of a box right and i don't have to have a spire for this i have the molding tool path is a very powerful tool path um and let's say i have a box lid here and i take and come out with my shift tool and my control tool and bring in a very small <laughs> undo control Z one of my favorite tools uh, hold down that control key bring that in here and uh, for this I'm going to just draw a profile really quick uh, first of all let me get a measurement and I'm going to measure my wide side just for this because it is a rectangular shape and everything um let's go horizontally from this point to this point and got 2.1463 2.1463 all right so on my rectangle here i'm going to make that 2.1463 wide because that's what that is and always that profile is getting drawn from the inside out, right? So on this profile here, imagine this. Imagine if I go into node editing mode and we remove this vector, delete that span. A line arc or curve between two nodes is a span, okay? So we're gonna delete this lower span. And um, let's look at my height of this object. I don't want it too tall. I only got a three quarter inch board. So I'm going to go 0.625 inches tall. And uh, I'm going to hit escape out of that. I'm going to unlink my XY. I'm going to go 0.625 inches tall. And let's break this down for a moment. Let's pull this down to here. Let's turn this into a Bezier curve and I want a nice gradual slope. A nice gradual slope. Go about here. 
Uh, let's go down a little thinner to about there. Nice little ramp, if you will. Um, I could add some little decorative detail, some beads and stuff, but I'm just going to go kind of with this for now, except for right about here, I'd like to insert a point. And right about here, I'd like to insert a point. I want to pull this point up and over. And I want to turn this into a straight line, right? And I'm going to create just like, if you will, kind of a chamfer, like a little bit of an angle chamfer. And when it comes in chamfers in here and stuff, I want this line to be a straight line. And I want this point to be even with this point. So I'm going to select this one first. Hold down my shift key, select that, and up and down is Y. So if I hit the Y on my keyboard, I'm going to pull that straight. So imagine this nice little profile here, right? And um, this little curve there. Let's select that, or let's not select that. Let's go into the molding toolpath and let's select this box here. Hold down our shift key, select on this. And you see how it's kind of all wild and out, right? And, and stuff, but it's good here. I'm not really kind of worried about what's going on. It's kind of a, it's it's going to create kind of a rectangular shape, if you will, um, and all. But let's let's just take a look. Let's calculate this out. And we're going to blank this up since we're kind of, imagine this is my box lid. And we're going to, oh, did I have sharp corners on that? Let me pop back in there. Did I have sharp corners checked? Yep, I did. I did. All right, let's preview those visible toolpaths. This is the rough cut because I'm machining the flat regions and all. Okay, and then let's do a quick profile cut on this, just so you can kind of get the full visual. We're going to cut all the way through 0.75 uh, end mill on the outside of the cut. I'm not going to add any tabs. We're going to calculate that. Preview. And probably should have probably should have made it square, but you know, let's come in here and yeah, let's not cut it off. I'm such an idiot. Hold on a minute. Hold on, guys. Don't don't panic. <laughs> that's all right i overshot it that's okay it'll work for now for just preview purposes because we got to move on to our model frames reset that preview the visible toolpath <clears throat> all right let's do our do our profile cut Calculate that. Preview visible toolpath. Hold on there. Let that little piece of scrap there. Let's go past the line a little bit. Put an allowance offset in there, Laney. Let it uh clean that piece up but so if we look at this we got our nice little chamfer you know down but imagine you know box lids and things like that so it's not just for creating framing this little area here the reason why i had this box in here is it gives me a place to i could do a 3d cut of a rose i could uh, carve somebody's name in here i could um uh, do some type of uh, decorative carving. I could put a metal little nameplate, whatever the case may be. 
but uh you know it's not just for picture frames i mean you can really do some really nice uh things and all that molding toolpath is one of my favorites so experiment with that have some fun play around and we don't need a spire this is in uh vcard pro that i'm in right now so the molding toolpath is a very cool tool all right that being said let's go ahead and get over into back to our molded frame but this time we're going to use some clip art so i'm going to pop up here to our decorative selection of clip art that comes standard with your vetric software and i'm going to scroll down and i'm going to grab this flourish here and let's grab this flourish here <clears throat> and that's it all right so with this flourish here let's start with this one first and then we might incorporate this one in a moment but let's uh let's start with one one and Let's come in here. Now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm gonna hold down my control key and drag this over. And I'm gonna use my mirror tool, my mirror tool. And I'm gonna mirror that vertically to flip it up. And I'm gonna rotate it ever so slightly this way. And I'm gonna drag that into here let's rotate that a little bit more this way okay now i have these two models what i'm going to do is literally take those Put them in, uh, double click on them. Put them in transform mode, if you will. Hold down my control key and pull this over into here. Oh, I was holding the shift key, not the control key. I couldn't see my, my keyboard. One more time. Let's uh, select both of those bad boys. And let's bring that right about here, if you will. All right, we'll start there for a moment, and we we got to do some uh, rotation and and things we want to kind of make the let's get it uh where it's kissing the top of that piece right there we want to kind of you know have this uh frame because we're gonna we're literally gonna go all the way around one at a time but let's start here so you can kind of see where we're where we're heading jack all right now if i look at this in the 3d view uh right now and let's close this tab for a minute so that we can come right in. If I go to my modeling tab, first thing I'm gonna do in my level, because I was playing around with this earlier, is I'm gonna turn off this uh, clipping model here. Uh, and you're gonna see these models, right? Okay, let's pull it down so we can all get on, on board here. Okay, now, the first thing that I wanna do is make sure that all my models are merging with one another okay but there's some areas this and this and that and there's some areas in here that i don't want to keep all right i don't want to keep them and all i have to do is kind of create the first half if you will 
of the frame and then i could mirror this whole level and mirror it to the bottom half to, to finish it off and all but i want to start here so you guys can see what to do and what we're doing and all uh so the first thing i'm going to do is let's take all of these objects and back them up just a little bit we're on the board and i got at least a couple of those there all right, on these two objects right here, this object here, and this object here, um, this object here, I want to, I want to fade, I want to fade it into this model. This object, I want to fade into this model. This object, I want to fade into this model. So if we look at this in the 3D view, I want some of this area right here to be gone. And the cool thing about uh, our tools is, is if I click on this object right here, this middle one, let's get off of this and select number two right here. If I double click on it, I'm going to get this blue box. When I'm in transform mode, if you will, I'm going to get this blue box. And this blue box is the properties box. When I click on it, the properties open up. And on this, we have a very cool tool called the fade tool. Now we have fade and tilt, right? So tilt is like sticking a wedge under the model. And when I set this, wherever I click first is going to be the thin part of the wedge. And wherever I click second is the second part of the wedge, the thicker part. And it's going to wedge that part up like shoving a wedge under there. Well, the fade tool basically takes an object and it fades it away to almost invisible depending on how much percentage you set and so on this object here if i fade and i click set if i fade from here to here as i even at 50 percent, it fades that object out and now you see how it's blending in and let's kind of zoom in on that so you can see so let's turn the fading off Okay, before kind of protruding, but now I'm fading from this direction to this direction. So it's kind of making this start to disappear. So with the fading on, even at 50%, you know, it starts fading it away. It kind of blends it together, almost like it's not even there, right? And then, so on this one here, I want to fade it into that one. This one here, I want to fade it into that one. We're going to work all the way down and all the way around and kind of fade. So once again, let's turn off number two and click on number three. Turn on our fade. The first place you click is what you want to keep. The second place is what you want to fade, the direction you want to fade into. You want to fade, right? Okay. And then last but not least, this guy here. Go into his properties, fade, click on the set button. I want to fade from here to here. here. I'm going to fade him away. All right. Now we've got something that looks a little bit more blended on that frame or what's going to be the frame. And this is going to get profile cut out to look like this when it's all said and done and stuff. And we could start to really compile a bunch of different things in here, some different leaves and really create a nice look. But what I don't want is I don't want those and that and that it's it's not what i want and if there was more this way i wouldn't want that one either so i want to kind of get rid of those objects so what i'm going to do is on each of these objects and let's go into the 2d view for this for each of these objects i'm going to create a boundary around them one two three So now I have these vector boundaries around here. And now I can go ahead and wherever my vector boundary is drawn to, if you will, uh, it's going to, you know, get rid of whatever's outside of that boundary. So back to our scissor tool. I'm going to trim away this boundary here. Okay, I want this to come just straight up around and down so that means this line goes away okay 
this line goes away and that line goes away. All right, so basically I'm cutting out that part right there. So this goes around and around and around. This line goes away. This outside goes away. That stays. And this line goes away. And this one. Come over here. This goes around. And it's going to come up here. So that line doesn't belong. This line doesn't belong. And this line doesn't belong. But I want to keep this line going through. Because I, I don't want this inside my boundary. So cut that away. So anything that's outside of my boundary. These objects here. Are going to disappear. So this is the cool thing about the new tools in your Vetric software and your levels. It's called the clipping level. So if I turn on level, anything in this level that is not inside of my boundary is gone. Now, this line right here we can delete. There's a few of them. Hold on a second here. We don't need that. So they're not important, but I don't want them there anyway. And that one's gone. Okay. So select my models. Select my boundary. <clears throat> and uh, was I not holding the shift key there, Junior? Okay. And if I go into this level, I can right click. On this level here and turn on clipping let's do this in the 3d view right click and turn on clipping <clears throat> boom gone right so now now things are starting to come together okay and you know i could do this all the way around i pulled this model out here thinking that you know possibly uh this could uh you know let me see got to turn clipping off in order to be able to see that model because look right it's not going to show it it's not part of it right so i got to go in here for a moment and turn clipping off so i can see everything and i thought maybe that this model could uh be sized down uh somewhat and kind of incorporated into this other model to kind of fill in, if you will, uh, create some filler space or something, you know, and just almost like a, you know, uh, some fill space, if you had. And um, I don't know, you know, it all kind of depends. Uh, you know, I just wanted to, I thought maybe that like in this area here, you know, we'd create some filler, if you will, you know, but I don't think, I don't think we'll, you know, nah, let's get rid of that. All right, so let's turn clipping back on. Oop, got to select my vector. Turn clipping back on. And anything outside of that vector gets eliminated. So we've tilted these models so they blend in really nicely in here. And then we've clipped away what we don't want. And anywhere, I could create multiple levels and put models in those multiple levels and have different forms of clipping. And what that gives me is the ability to create some amazing things with the models, uh, you know, that we have and stuff. And all. We could, you know, just kind of go to town this would be a cool one uh to create a frame with you know kind of tying all these together to where it was just square all the way around but i kind of liked this unique way and let me show you uh what i was what i'm leading up to if you will all right there's a there's a couple of examples of um these uh frames so let me pull over the uh you know got a lot of pinterest you know for ideas and things like that but uh let's take a look at this frame right so how sexy is that for you know some wall art you know uh 
and we could create that. Now in Aspire, you know, we could build those models and all, but we could create this with our a combination of our molding tool path and our clip art and the clipping layers and things. But even better, check this bad boy out. Imagine a sign, right? We if we put together a bunch of different models and everything and all, and then we had that area to where, you know, this could say something, you know, family, home, uh, whatever. Live, laugh, love. It could be, you know, whatever. But I mean, that's that's sexy. Right, and we have the ability. Whether we have desktop pro or Aspire, we have the clipping ability, and we have the um, all kinds of things, and so we can really create some really unique things. And I mean, one of uh, my, I mean, on on the wall, this bad boy right here. I mean, that would that would be an eye catcher, and that's kind of where i'm kind of leading i haven't brought in the flowers or anything yet but this is what we're kind of uh getting ready to kind of lay out if you will but imagine even on a simpler term you know just something like this where it's just kind of a border you know and that's where we could you know just keep continuing this all the way around and we create our two sides and where that area just gets carved in between the model we create our vectors and let me show you how that works so you can you're like okay laney I'm, I'm still not getting it hold on let me show you let's take uh these models here and <clears throat> let me let me just do this one row and then the other three sides would be basically the same so let's uh see if i can take my models that are already kind of tilted and things and i'm going to hold down the control key put them in transform mode, hold down the control key and drag them straight across and then delete these two i don't need them stop this one get rid of it this one get rid of it okay let me draw my vectors model tool select on you know this and create that vector boundary select on this create that vector boundary okay and create that vector boundary all right now in order to uh, get this to work, I got to turn clipping off. You always got to turn clipping off, okay? Um, and now we can select our vector boundary, you know, because it it wasn't going to create that boundary on a model that's not visible, and right, it's not visible because I had clipping on. All right. So with our two lines here, once again, we're very simply going to go into our scissor tool. And our path, not changing, going to get rid of that. Get rid of that line and this line and that line. That ties this all together. We don't need this silly one right there. And over here, get rid of this line. How many vectors did I draw on this border here? I drew quite a few. Okay. Scissor tool. Let's trim that up, get rid of that one, get rid of that one, and that one. Okay, so I got my boundaries. Let's look at the 3D view and make sure everything is blending. It's blending here, but not here, right? Blending here. So I got to do a little bit of tilt and fade, tilt and fade. Uh, not tilt, but just fade. So let's grab this guy here. Go back into my modeling tab. <clears throat> and uh, he's selected. Let's go into double click on him here so I can pull up the properties here. 
And of course, the properties is the same thing as this. But when I use this window of the properties, I got to be in the 2D view. This gives me the property window for the 3D view. And that's what I want to work in. I want to kind of be able to work in this 3D view and everything. So I'm going to turn on the tilt or not. Sorry, the, the fade. Hit set. And again, I'm going to click here. This is the area I want to keep. This is the area I want to fade. Okay. Fade, if you will. All right. So with that, I'm going to select my vector. And turn on <clears throat> clipping. And there we go. Now I got one little defect right here. That little ball right there doesn't look good. So, and I caught that before I clipped, but that's that little guy right there. So what I'm going to do with him is on this particular piece is I'm going to rotate him. Why aren't you, why are you sizing? Don't size. Rotate. Let me undo him. Rotate. And. Bring him down just a little bit. Now, I've changed him. Right? I've changed him. So that means I've got to recreate my little vector around him okay and all the old vectors got to get gone bye bye so you know i've changed him so we've got to come in and trim away all the old stuff and i i redrew his new vector so that means this this old one here trim it away and I'm following the new path, so this vector here, trim that away. This outside piece, trim that away. Get rid of all that old stuff. All right, this inside piece, trim that away. Trim that away. Trim that. All right, we basically just had to redraw that section there. Over here, same thing. Anything that's not uh, following the outside path of my model, it's gone. Okay, we just had to, we made a quick move. So we had to come back and do a little bit of quick cleanup. Oop, wrong line. He goes, he goes, he goes. Some kind of back and forth, back and forth. Uh, come on down. You're on the prices right. On that, and zoom in this little guy right there. That line doesn't belong. This inside line doesn't belong. This one doesn't belong. That inside doesn't belong. Zoom in nice and tight because there's a little guy there. And then get rid of all that. We're almost there. We're almost caught back up to where we were. And then now we're back to here. We got to <clears throat> oh, control Z. There's no vector on the outside of this one here. So let's uh Retrace him, go back to the modeling tab and put a border around him. And then now we can clean up and reconnect all this. Now, right here, this is missing. So, what that means is that. I've got to kind of retrace this path. And that's going to give me, when I trim it away, it's going to give me a, a bit of a duplicate, if you will. And I'll clean that up. Oop. Got to select them. Click on that. And so here's my new path right here. And so now I can trim that away. Come in here, trim this away. That little guy right there. Got to zoom in sometimes on these things uh, and, uh, you know, to catch them and stuff. All right. So this line is going to go away. And now I should have my path. But now if I look at this, 
you see I got a black line out here. And that black line uh, is a duplicate, if you will. So if I, if I right click, you know, if I, if I draw from right to left, it selects everything. And now I can turn on or turn off, hold my shift key and turn off that old vector. And that just leaves this selected and I can delete it out of there. Right. It was just that extra piece. And then that leaves these two little lines. Again, zoom in. Your eyes will start to catch on to these things. But now I've got, I had to, all because I had to move him just a little bit. I had to kind of redraw this. But once it's done, I can turn my clipping back on, select my vector, turn the clipping back on on that selected vector, and it's open. It's going to be ignored. So let's see what's open about it. Go back to the drawing tab, and I've got one open vector. So somewhere. Somewhere, I do not have a line trimmed. Let me follow this all the way around. All the way around and through. He comes around, up the bin, through there, around, up the bin, through here, around. This guy, by all that is holy, should be closed. He should be closed. All right. So what I'm going to do is he should be closed. There's no big gap. So I'm going to join with a smooth curve. Right. And wherever that little gap was that I can't find. It drew a smooth little curve to close that vector. And I'm okay with that because it was so small. I would have been here searching forever in there. And somewhere in one of these little crevices or creeks, there was a little gap. It wasn't allowing me to close it. But by joining it with a smooth curve, it drew a nice little curve in there and closed it off. And I'm okay with that. <clears throat> so, back to our modeling tab. Turn on clipping. Okay. So now my little framed area looks good. Now, as a reference, let's go back over here and let's look at this. This is what we're trying to emulate here, if you will. Right? Follow along with me. We're, we're going across the top, but this is kind of what we're emulating. And I'm going to show you how to create that. So, first thing that we want to do is we're going to select all of these models and all and we're going to move them down and i'm going to go to my alignment tool and center them left to right left to right okay and Let's create our box, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and let's take this centerpiece and I'm going to scale it ever so slightly on its I'll scale it proportionally just ever so slightly down Let it regenerate. And then I'm going to take this object here and offset it inward by, I don't know, 
I mean, it would all be portion. I'm going to go, let's go a quarter of an inch and see where it brings it to sharp corners. Offset and work. Okay, let's go. We can go much better than that. Good. Uh, let's go a half an inch. I was hoping I scaled it down to half an inch. There we go. All right. So this area here is going to be my vector boundary for 3D modeling, for the 3D model. Okay. And if this was a frame going all the way around, uh, you would create your next section, next section the same way that you do this. If you look at this image here, they've got it looking like it's a butt jointed right here to where this piece is butt up against this piece. And this piece, you know, these two rails and styles, you know, they're butt up to each other. And basically, you would create your next section, next section, and your bottom. You could actually mirror this down here to create both sides but let's create one and go from there so on our visible model i've got to go into my modeling tools and turn off clipping anytime you size change or anything you've got to turn your clipping off and simply turn it back on one one of these days they'll adjust that to where your clipping frame once you but but right now once you size this if i size this it's kind of maintaining that original size so you have to turn it off and turn it back on with that vector so with this that's going to be my model boundary and i'm just going to do a rough cut using the selected vector as the boundary uh let's go with a quarter inch end mill that's good I'm going to do a Z level raster along the X axis and calculate. <clears throat> Reset our preview and preview our selected tool path. Okay, and uh, uh, let's do that again with the model at the top, ladies and gentlemen. Model at the top, not at the bottom. Sorry about that. <clears throat> let's uh, recalculate him now with the model at the top. I was wondering, I was like, man, that's cutting awfully deep there, laney boy. All right, let's reset that and preview that selected toolpath. <laughs> that looks more like it. Now, while that's previewing out, let's go up. We got a lot of questions here. Oh my goodness. Um, Wayne, sorry, man. I'm talking to you later. I didn't get to say goodbye to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you guys said goodnight for me, it looks like. Yes, Ronnie, Probert, uh, great design for the top of there. And when we were talking about those tops, um, that's exactly uh, what I, you know, that's when I'm, the boxes, the urns is, uh, my urns, they decorate, they have those decorative tops and things. So, uh, yep, you were thinking right along the same line. Jeff, can you use what you just did to make a dome-shaped top? Yes, I can. And I'll show you that in just a second. Warren, that is awesome, right? All right, let's get over here. How do you get rid of volutes two, three, and four? Hold on a second, never finished. Let me see if, uh, are our models called volutes? Let's work. Where, uh, tell me what, tell me what, uh, Never finished 2005. Uh, volutes 2, 3, and 4. Let me know what you mean by that. Give me a... Um, oh, never mind. I didn't see your next one. He sees it now. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't know what 2, 3, and 4 were. Uh, so, um, uh, let me know. 
All right, so now let's come in and create our finished toolpath with the same selected vector as the boundary. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch ball nose for this. Now, the great thing about the clipping toolpath, the uh, the clipping uh, level using the clipping and all, this toolpath is only calculating on what is visible, what it's seeing. And because uh, we used our vector here to create that clipping mask, if you will, it cut out those edges. And so it's not, it's not carving those. It's only carving them on the visible model. So let's preview that selected toolpath. Now, in hindsight, I'd probably bring this edge up a little closer. I mean, to where we're almost touching here. I'd probably bring this box in a little bit smaller because we're also going to do kind of a, um, yeah, gosh, hindsight, Laney, hindsight. Let's, uh, let's bring this box real quick. I need this box here. Okay. I need that box there. Hindsight, Laney, hindsight. Let's bring this up to here and I'm snapping to that over here. That's my high side. Let's bring this down there and bring this up to here. Let me snap that, uh, grab this and you can, when I grab it, I can now move my mouse over and snap to where I want to snap to. All right. So I got everything snapped there. This little guy, he is right outside of that model. And that's fine. That's fine. You want to know why that's fine? Because anything that's outside of my boundary, he wouldn't be there, you know, if it wasn't for, you know, this. So what I'm going to do is very quickly go back over to my level, turn off clipping, Right, I'm going to come in here and on this vector, go back to my drawing tab, go into node editing real quick, and I'm going to take and delete those points. I'm going to select them and hit D on my keyboard and pull this up, make this a curve, is a curve, pull this just back down here pull him in ever so lightly and when i turn when i select this get out of node editing mode when I select this and I turn my clipping back on, right, go into the 3D view, let's close this for a moment, that little tail is not going to be there, know what I mean, it's going to be cut off, all right, real quick, on this toolpath, 3D rough cut, I'm going to recalculate him, based on that select that newly sized selected vector very quickly and on the 3d finish same thing i'm going to recalculate him because i'm going to be cutting uh, all of this out and that frame those models are going to be connected to that frame so this is all going to be open air you don't have to cut it out but you know i might want to see my wall through that you know, and this just be the frame, if you will. And then I have this boxed outline, you know, these rigid edges and all. So let's reset this preview and preview uh, those visible toolpaths again. So that rough cut, 
<clears throat> followed by the finish cut. And then the last thing that I've got to do is I'm going to create kind of almost like a, a if you will, a pocket cut um, between these vectors, you know, and it might be, it would probably be a little bit quicker as a profile cut. And I could go into another layer and just trim these away and create these individual different uh vectors and all for a profile but as a pocket cut it'll serve the same purpose and this is going to go through the material um i'm probably gonna i'd probably use an extended length eighth inch end mill uh one and three thirty seconds extended length eighth inch end mill and let's calculate that My eighth inch and mill come back and clean up those areas to create that frame, if you will. You know, kind of with me. And you know, of course, these and you know, for the proportion of this this box or this window, these would be much smaller. It'd be narrower. You know, coming through, they wouldn't be that wide because that would leave a very small area in here. But, you know, that would be your modeled frame. And you would have, you know, one here, one here. And so if I took all of these and mirrored them using the mirror tool, flipping about job center, creating a mirror copy, flip vertically, Now, in my modeling tab, all of these copies right now, I'm going to, while they're highlighted, I'm going to move them up to level two. Okay. I want my level one clipping to be this. And on my level two, my level two, I don't want to clip this yet because I followed this path all the way down the way it's going to go. This ball and this ball would be on opposite sides of one another. Okay. So this whole thing right here is going to get flipped with the mirror tool, not making a copy, flipping it about job center. It's going to flip horizontally. Give it a second. Okay, and so imagine my horn coming down and it would tie into that and then this piece coming up and it would tie into that. Now, you know, you'd want it to kind of, you know, somewhat match. Now on my level two right here, this inside vector, you know, my still my same path, that is going to be my level two clipping. Okay. So that way I have my clipping mask for both. And then we just, you know, we'd fill in the middle and you'd have, you know, that frame. But on my tool pass, my 3D rough, my 3D finish, and my pocket, I'm still, I, you know, all at once. I don't have to do them separate. But let's recalculate that. Are you guys seeing it or is it just, are you seeing it? Um, let me know if you're seeing, if you kind of get the spiral to an, okay, thank you. The loop spiral. Um, 
let me know if you're you're seeing the vision as to how you can make some really nice frames with the 3D models using the clipping mask. And of course, they would be sized appropriately, uh, but you could really make some really nice framing. Let's recalculate. Oops. Recalculate this. And then we're going to do something in here. Because a frame doesn't always have to go to all four sides. You know what I mean? So. Let this come through. All right, awesome blossom. And then our pocket tool path. Um, we're going to hit select on this and choose a quarter inch end mill instead of a half inch. Uh, cutting. Quarter-inch end mill, and on that pocket tool path, both of these down here also get selected. Calculate. All right, let's preview uh, the. Visible tool pass. All right, and last but not least on this, I'm going to draw in a rectangle here. And on this rectangle, I need the spacing that is basically the spacing of the side and here, kind of roughly, you know, that same spacing I want here. So I'm going to measure using my measure tool and i'm going to measure vertically from here to here let's zoom in real small so roughly you know three quarters of an inch so 0.77 uh and so what i want to do is i'm going to use a guideline to help me let's close this tool i'm going to pull a guideline down to here and snap it to there and I'm going to pull another guideline and kind of snap it to there. And then I'll create a relative guide on this one going positive in the positive direction, 0.77. And then that would be exact. I'll just get there. And then close that. And on this one, again, a relative, but this time going negative because I'm going down. Create. Okay. And that gives me uh, the area that I can take and snap to. Maybe did I snap to it? Yeah, I snapped to that one, but not this one. Hmm. Zoom in so we can all see what's happening. There we go. All right. Now at this point, right now, at this point, this outside rectangle here is not being used, or this outside rectangle here is not being used. Okay, 
what is being used is kind of this inside rectangle. And on here, I want to bring this in. If I grab this anchor here, I can drag my mouse up anywhere and I want to I want to anchor it to that, right? And over here, if I grab this outside here, I can pull in and drag my mouse anywhere I want to and I want to snap to that so it's in line with that frame, okay? I'm just about to create basically a three panel carving, if you will. Now this one, I'm gonna put some text in the middle here. Uh, let's do some nice, uh, let me just find it says family. And let's, um, let's change fonts up a bit. Roll down. Gigi. I think we said we kind of liked what the way Gigi looked. I don't think it's for that. So. Bear with me a second here. Okay. Let's uh, pull that in. See what a bowl looks like. Looks like yeah, <laughs> looks much better. All right, let's uh, close this tool and let's fix this to where it's a little bit more appropriately sized. So let's kind of maybe right about there and then stretch this a little bit like that. And what I want to do is make sure that family is centered into between this rectangle. So if I come in here and center, make sure I'm kind of centered in that rectangle there. All right, so I've got that. And now we're going to do kind of a raised V carve. All right, so I'm going to hold down my shift key and select these two objects here. We're going to do a V carve toolpath. And on this, I'll probably go. I don't know, I like an eighth of an inch. Um, but, uh, so I'm gonna kind of stick with that. I'm gonna use a quarter inch tool uh, where it'll fit, and then I'm also gonna use an eighth inch tool where it'll fit for some clearing. You, can, you only need to use one, but I like to use two to get some of that extra cleanup. And then I'm gonna be using my 60 degree V bit. Now I do not want swirl marks in this design here. So, you know, I'd love to be able to uh choose you know the option of offset or raster and uh you know offset look good but raster is going to give me the better look it's going to cut with the grain i'm going to get a nice clean cut and i'm not going to have those swirl marks when it's circling around those letters and stuff like the offset gives me now i find that to be you know basically clue and i don't i don't like to do a whole lot of cleanup when i'm done carving i want to carve and go so uh i raster cut always so we'll calculate this and let's preview the visible toolpath And uh, not to be outdone, but look, a little plain old family is, right? Uh, it might need a little, few little swirls or something in there, or, you know, I don't know, tie this together. But what I am going to do that's going to really dress it up is I am going to throw a texture in there. In this case, uh, it's going to, um, the start depth is going to be zero. Uh, it's going to cut down an eighth of an inch. Um, the variation is i'm going to go a 16th roughly somewhere around there <clears throat> eighth inch to a 16th one inch cut and i'll keep all this the same but i am going to stay away from it by an eighth of an inch and on this ball nose instead of the 16th inch ball nose which made it look so thin i'm going to go with a oh do i have my quarter in here i do what the heck? i'm going to go with my quarter inch ball nose 
and calculate a little bit bigger area, a little bit bigger sign. So I want kind of almost looking like uh, chisel scoops, if you will. And the studio. Uh, my texture has to start. Oh, wrong one. My texture has to start at an eighth of an inch because that's how deep my pocket is. All right, let's calculate that out. And let's preview that visible toolpath. Um, okay, I'm not a big fan, real quick, of the quarter inch uh ball nose. Let me just switch that up for myself. Uh, let's go with my eighth inch tapered ball nose, keep everything uh the same here, and calculate that again. And this will be our last rendering of this project. All right, let's reset this back. And uh, so you can see what tool paths that we're going to be viewing. We've got two different projects going on here. Uh, we are going to uh, our texture tool path here. We've got our pocket clear. In our pocket one that's going to be my quarter and 16th inch in or eighth inch in mill that's kind of clearing out that pocket we've got uh the um 3d where is it hiding my 3d rough cut not that one come on though 3d rough cut 3d finish cut uh for that and then we have our v carve one and two uh v carve cut and texture so these guys right here. So if we preview that visible toolpath. Now, while that goes on, let's go ask uh, any questions. And someone said uh, that would look nice flipped. Now, Sylvia, were you talking about maybe uh, almost like if it was vertical instead of horizontal, like if it was vertical and those flutes were kind of traveling down and maybe you had some nice little something in the middle here? Uh, heck, it could even be another model, like a third wall panel or something, you know, something cut out. Um, but uh, in a horizontal fashion, you know, a nice uh, long and, or, you know, tall and narrow object. It could be a three-dimensional cut in there as well. Or it could be something, you know, uh, family could be vertical instead of horizontal. I'm doing it horizontal. But is that what you were referring to when you said uh, that would look nice flipped? Or um, are you saying that... Um, the my models need to be flipped somehow but uh <clears throat> let me know hey luca have a great night thank you Uh, we could probably do a better font than the font that I chose for the word family, but you guys get the idea. I'm just trying to show a little something. And this texture is going to go all the way up. Okay. So whether we're doing something in uh, this fashion or we're actually making a modeled frame, right, uh, that is, you know, some type of decorative modeled frame uh, that we cut, some kind of pattern all the way around a piece, or we're just creating some kind of, you know, standout selection, um, we could really you know, create some unique pieces and that 
clipping tool path, um, allowing us to blend models and trim, you know, just by creating the vector, trimming away what we don't want. Using the fade and the tilt when we need to, to fade one thing into another. Um, all of these things uh, that, uh, that help us uh, create some really nice, unique pieces. So a combination of this, a combination of using our vectored picture frames, you know, to create molding, uh, you know, moldings around and stuff. All of these things um, can really take us to a, you know, a completely new level with, than what we're used to doing. Now, the thing that uh, I would probably do on here is I would probably sacrifice a little bit of my model on these edges and do a little bit of a chamfered edge so that, uh, you know, it would be a little rough. And if that was the case, then I would take these models and extend them beyond that boundary so that a fatter part of the leaves and all, instead of the little tip, is in there uh and uh and everything um so i could maybe run my chamfering bit around this edge because if you see here there are three different lines that don't look very good at all uh this is where the half inch and mill cut to this is where the eighth inch and mill cut to, or the quarter inch sorry this is where the eighth inch ball nose cut to and it created this step um and if you notice in my 3d rough <clears throat> In 3d finish i don't have any boundary offsets that's just what it cut to based on the you know the rough cut of the bit and everything and so i have that in my 3d view you know i've got that step and i'd want to clean that step up uh whether i you know chamfered it out with a v-bit 90 degree v-bit now if i chamfer that there's a chance of possibility that i'm going to cut these i know there's for a fact it's going to cut here but it's going to clean up that edge for me and so what that would look like is if i took these two edges here these two vectors and i came in and did a a profile cut on the inside of the line and i would i would use the widest you know kind of uh not why i wouldn't i can't say that i wouldn't use the widest but i would use a wide bit or a shallow chamfer one of the two so if i stick with the same angle that my center cut was cut with which was my 60 degree v bit then i need to you know let's let's look at it let's see what it looks like inside of the line now my 60 degree v bit i need it to step over that line this way so that it creates that chamfer and kind of cleans up that edge and so that's a negative number in the allowance offset. I'm allowing that bit to go past the line. And so if I go negative, um, my 60 degree is a quarter inch diameter. If I go negative an eighth, that's almost like splitting the bit right on that line. I don't quite want to do that. So I'm going to step over. Point seven five inches and down let me get my cut depth right uh, it's not going to be a th three quarters of an inch uh we're only going to go in let's start with uh eighth of an inch cut depth yeah 90 degree would give me much more angle at an eighth of an inch um yeah let's do the 90 degree Still letting it step over, uh, you know, negative 0.875. And if we look at this in the 2D view with uh, the view and everything, you can see where my bit's going to cut. So I'm kind of sacrificing some of this area of the model. If I step over more, 
if I step over more, let's step over You know, I'm sacrificing less. And I can actually I can actually live with that. I'll I can live with that. So let's um preview that chamfer. Let's get up close and personal and see what that looks like. Okay. So it, it didn't quite get down into where I need. So we gotta go a little bit deeper. It got where I want on the three sixteenth, but let's get a little deeper here. Me a decimal point. I'm gonna sneak up on it until I get the right one. That's what I love about the preview. Okay, still not quite there. I'm not cleaning up that little round over there. So let's go down a quarter. I went in the wrong direction. Why did that go in the wrong direction? Hang me. There we go. All right, so ignore that little screw up right there. It's going to be this. <laughs> So that'll give me a little bit of a, because I don't want to recalculate or not recalculate. I don't want to re preview all the tool paths, but, uh, you know, clean up that edge and everything. That way it kind of eliminates and kind of gives it, you know, more of a finished look and all and everything kind of gives it that setback look and stuff. You guys with me? All right. Yeah, man, Steven, no problem. Uh, Real quick, um, we got to, let's see here. Robert says, how do you save this to use on other projects? How do I save what? Which which part? Like the, the, the model part here? How would you save that to use on other projects? Uh, let me know, Rodney, if that's what you're referring to. How would I save that to use other projects? Because, I mean, I can basically... If I wanted to use that kind of model concept with something different in here or that kind of layout, then all I have to do is just, you know, save the file, right? So right now it says new. I haven't saved anything. And I can go file save. And let's go, let's create a new folder here for today. And we'll just call this class folder. And all this programming. Oh Lord, have mercy! Can get my good old fat fingers. Uh, turn off that cat lock. Oh, I don't have it. All right, so uh, I can save this. And if I were, you know, creating a, another job, we can, you know, let's say we have another job and we're, we're working on something in some of this element, one of these elements or something I want to bring into this, uh, you know, other job. All I have to do is import a file, import the vectors. Right, so when I come over here, I can click on this faux family and click open, and it's going to say some layers you're importing are invisible. Do you would you like to show them? And I'll just say yes, uh, and you know it's going to bring in that entire you know project, even my little tracings and everything. I don't need the bitmap on that layer. I don't need on. There's nothing on this layer. I'd clean up my files first and all. 
but these are these are those objects and everything and you know that imported you know the vector portion of this but it didn't import the model right so in order to import the model i got to go into the modeling tab and Unfortunately, it's not going to let me. <laughs> so it's only going to let me bring in the vectors. You know, and let's turn all these off for a moment. only going to let me bring in the vectors i'd have to recreate so let me know what parts you were wanting to bring in uh can you use this in other projects let me know what part you were wanting to bring in uh rodney that'll be important all right let's see here uh good night jeff have a great night uh sylvia rodney thank you very much yes that part uh the the models and all Unfortunately, you don't have the ability to, you know, when you save a file, you don't have the ability to uh, import this or save it, you know, that model, that layout. If you have a Spire, you do. VCAR Pro, I can't save that modeled view that I had. Um, you know, I can't save, let's close this. I can't save these models that I've trimmed and clipped and everything and bring them in. I can bring in the vectors from them, but I can't bring in, you know, the actual modeled objects. If I had a Spire and I created this, I could absolutely come in and export this out as a 3D model clip art, and it would go into my library, and I could, uh, you know, I could do that, but I can't do that with Pro. And I'm working in Pro tonight, so unfortunately, what you would have to do is if there's a portion of this you want to keep or you know claim, uh, basically. If I closed out of this and I wanted to use that model portion again as somehow or another, then I would open that file. I would open that file with my models and all, and I would immediately rename it to something else. You know, new project, whatever, you know, rename it something else and now i'm working in a whole new project uh and not my original and uh you know i could then remove what i don't want keep what i do want change things around move things around what have you um and um when i do right change things around and all and then you know when i save this you know new project and everything with the new style whatever it is i did then it's saving that new file it's not overwriting my old one so i've just saved this and if i you know close out of this file close you know now i've got my new project and i've got my faux family if i open my faux family uh, sign back up it's still intact i haven't changed anything so that would be the only way that you could do it okay all right <clears throat> all right everybody what's well, 9 46 uh looks like everybody is kind of ducking out and uh we are uh getting ready to say goodnight. i just wanted to show you uh two ways that we could create some really cool uh projects and framing and things uh to have some fun with one is using your uh, decorative um, models and everything, and the other being using your uh, sweat profile. And let's get rid of that sweat profile. Turn all these off. And get back in here.
that home sweet home think about that texture think about those trim lines and stuff uh it's a real fun way to have some fun uh so we have a question yeah yeah rodney exactly uh oh yeah rodney you have a spire so in your aspire rodney you come up to on that model you come up to the modeling tab up at the top of the software uh which is hidden by my banner real quick let me turn off my brand and up in the let's stop this for you real quick i got too many things uh going on here um under the mod your modeling in aspire you go to model uh export as 3d model clip 3d model clip or clip art uh, and uh, that will uh, export it out and you want to you can save it right in to your c drive program files not program files sorry <laughs> i was too many things on my c drive users public public documents vetric files and you have a uh, clip art where all your other models are and you can create like I have a custom folder here. You can create a custom folder and, you know, save it right in there. And that way it'll show up in your Vetric software. You know. So. Yeah. And. Uh, I appreciate everybody. And we'll just. Uh, Look at, see if we got here any more questions. Mike. No, it's not. Not yet. I don't know what is going on with them and everything, but uh, it's still not done yet. Now, all my subscribers uh, for training and all my subscribers and everything, uh, your files are going, you got two files for the month of March. Uh, they're going out uh, to, I think, what is tomorrow? Uh, they're going out Thursday. Uh, and so you'll have those in your inbox, in your email. For my training subscribers, your uh, March two files are going to come out Thursday to your inbox. But Mike, no, not yet. I'm hoping, man, I'm really wanting this thing to get done. But uh the uh, company is dragging their ass. And it's, it's it, I mean, an SL certificate should be easy. Uh, this one's a little bit complicated because of the high amount of insurance, uh, you know, the $2 million insurance policy. But um, it's just taken forever. And so it's still not ready. And when it is, then I can start to populate my gallery and all. And so not quite yet. Um, not there uh, just yet. So what I'm doing here is home sweet home. And texture number one. And I'm just previewing that visible tool by the guy. All right. Thanks, Warren. I appreciate you, Todd. I thank you. Uh, you guys um, definitely uh, give it a try. Love to see what you come up with. If y'all come up with any projects utilizing any one of these two things, think about using your decorative frames uh, for wall art or your models. Play around with that new, if you're in uh, version 10, uh, play around with that model clipping. Uh, for creating some really unique models and stuff and um, for those of you that do have aspire and you come up with something really nice with the models you can export those out and add them to your library and start populating your library of models even more and more and more so have some real fun with that all right everybody let's say our good night i want to thank you and I don't think I have any questions that I missed. Let me see here. Oh, I did have a question. Uh, can you send a rendering to a potential customer from Aspire? A 3D rendering? Absolutely, from any software, not just not just Aspire. Uh, you can send, you know, when you create, like if I create this image here, when it's created, 
that save preview image right here. Save preview image. You'll save that as a JPEG, PNG, bitmap, uh, and uh, you can email that image right to the customer and they're going to see the preview, you know, of whatever you want to show them. So what I like to do is, you know, kind of position the, uh, you know, whether you go straight on, you know, where they're looking at it straight on, or if you want to have a couple of different angles, you can do a couple of different looks and things uh, from different sides, but save each of those images and then you can email them, you know, that. So just click on this and save it as either a PNG, JPEG, or GIF. And, um, you know, spin it around, let them, you know, give them a good look at the frame, whatever the case may be. Save those images and you can email them right out. All right, everybody. Until next time, have a great day. If I missed any of your comments or um, your questions, I will go back and review those and uh, I will follow up with those in the chat. Uh, but in the meantime, if you like this class or you like the topic or you think you might use some of these things, definitely give a thumbs up and uh, share the video. Have a good night, guys.